Can you hear me from your room? No, I can't. You're you're so far away now. Unless you scream. I don't know. Okay, I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> you didn't hear that from Discord. You just heard that out the window. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> All the way from the OC. Okay, so Brain, can we can we start this episode with your your most embarrassing story at Knotts, please? Oh my god, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this to Brandon? Because I because I hope by the time this episode comes out, I will have footage of this that I have found online. Here's what here's what here's here's what I'm saying. If Brandon you can goes include viral. all of this. As far as I'm concerned, you could you can include my scream to start the podcast of Can you hear me from the other room? Okay. Ah, yeah. And, fine. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a short story, so it works for our episode. If you think about there it, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So today at work, uh, fellow podcasting people who audiences, <laughs> uh, today I I was going to work. I worked a bunch of rides, and they they. They didn't let me you off. You work at time. Knott's Berry Farm, like, by the way, for those who don't know. Yeah, I work at. Yeah, in case anyone doesn't know, he works at Knott's. <laughs> I work as a ride operator, so I, I I operate rides and I send people to have joy. You know what I mean? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that while well, <laughs> I send them to joy. <laughs> It's me, like you being the the DD, like or fear. <laughs> it's either that or fear or because fear. then. Kids will wow. start crying on like baby rides, and I'm like, I'm sorry that this is too scary for you. Um, but this this is like I they I was off late, and I was really like trying to focus on like where's my supervisor? My supervisor's not picking up the phone, uh, and I'm so focused on it that I don't see like an awning on this one attraction I'm working, and I turn around and I bang my head, and I wear a hat at work because it's hot outside, it's sunny, I don't want to get sunburned because I. Shown Ethan my sunburns already. It's kind of intense. <laughs> and I yeah. hit my head so hard that my hat fell off and I uttered fuck in Camp Snoopy. I feel bad. I feel bad for exposing Ooh. children to that language. Holy uh, <laughs> even though I have a podcast where we routinely do this on the week. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know. They don't They don't need a name to a face. You know what I mean? Uh, the kids and, <laughs> don't listen to Stacked, unfortunately. <laughs> right. But then from behind me, I hear from like one dad, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. But I, and I hear from another dad, and I don't see this dad, but I hear it, and I know for a fact parents like to record their children on rides because, you know, that's what parents do, especially the modern generation. He's like, oh, I got that on camera. What? Yes. My embarrassment. I don't know if it's going to be broadcast on the internet, but if it is, <laughs> hopefully it's for everyone to enjoy. That would be Folks. hilarious to see on Snap Maps, though. Can you imagine? Listeners. You're like, all right, my kid's going to go on this ride, and then it's like, boom, boom. <laughs> And you just see Brandon flip back with his hat go off like a fucking Three Stooges sketch. <laughs> Your arms flailing up. But yeah, that that was my day at work. Not a very good day, but you know, we'll pick up the pace this weekend. Yes, we will pick up the pace on this show right now. Because today, on episode 52 of Stacked, we're, we're doing a little, we're shaking things up a bit. We're getting a little outside the box here. We're not talking about films necessarily. We're talking about films that are short, short films. Now, I think the definition of a short film, isn't it, it's considered feature length when it's over 50 minutes, right? Is I think the... it's either that or 60. It's either 50 or 60. Okay. So that's the, that's the criteria we went off of, basically. Um, the short film is... It's an interesting one because you are working with you're battling against time to constrain a story that you want to tell within a mere matter of minutes, you know? So, I had a fun time putting together a list of short films of all different lengths really that uh sort of capture just like what filmmakers can do with such little time and tell so much. Chris, what what was your process of like uh filing through because there's a we've probably seen a shitload of short films you know yeah just no, as definitely. many as normal films so so like what was your process of putting together your stack i mean one thing that i really 
like started thinking about when we decided that this was going to be our theme was that like we've covered such a wide array of movies over like the last like year with you know narrative documentary animation experimental and a billion things in between um but we've never really looked at short form movies or cinema um and that's something i'm like gardner at the gallop (laughs) <laughs> okay, technically, technically, yes. Um, but and yeah, Kong I, Fury. that was literally it. an experiment too. It's literally experimental yeah. film, literally. Anyway, but um, <laughs> I'm, I, I, yeah, kind of like you, Ethan. I'm really excited to like share this one because it's like I think one thing that's going to make this really interesting is because this is actually a medium of film that we all have some kind of experience in because you know we all took some level of a film class where we had to make something. Um, and you know, it's also a very like modern and democratic like form of that movies can take because, and especially now more than ever, anyone can pick up a camera and do a little something. So yeah, yeah, you know, especially considering that, and like, like when you start thinking, diving into like the whole the implications of media convergence and the subjectivity of the word film, it feels logical to me to like want to expand in this way and do like an episode about short short films. So. You know, in the near future, if you ever hear us talking about commercials, music videos, TikToks, or whatever, we've gone off the rails. But <laughs> as long movies, as they're on Letterbox, TikToks. remember, if they're on Letterbox, if they're on Letterbox, they're up, they're <laughs> up for a, stack. If they start adding TikToks best TikTok, on TikTok Letterboxd. movies, <laughs> I wonder. Do you think we see we make that joke? But do you think, like, in a couple of years, maybe? No, I'm a purist. The- <laughs> no, just kidding. I don't know. Maybe I refuse. It's possible. You've seen VR adv- or VR advancements, uh, stuff true. like that. Video games, 4D movies. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Concert so films. Is that cinema? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it can mm-hmm. be. All right. Anyway, how about you, Bernie? It's a documentary. What was yeah. your huh? What was your process yeah. like with choosing your favorite shorts? You know, I wanted to bring to light like shorts mostly that I feel like people haven't seen or maybe even heard of. And if they've heard of them, maybe like they don't even know where to find them. So like in a way, I feel like this is a good way to like introduce people to something that like I love. And I remember uh, Ethan and I, I, Chris, I don't think you did this, but um, Ethan and I have done this thing where we've done stretches of our life with like watching one film a day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there literally isn't time in a day to watch a film like a feature. So like you'd f- I'd find like short films over that like time just looking for something to watch so that I could fill in that gap on Letterbox, and um, I found some pretty good short films that way actually, and some of them are stinkers. Yeah, you're gonna run into that with anything, but like there's so much good stuff out there, and I think my process was mainly that. You know, it wasn't necessarily to bring like the shorts medium to be like okay, well, like this is underrepresented, but like this is like definitely something that you need to see though regardless of whether or not you're into film so yes 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 all right this is going to be an exciting episode because i think because short film this is a really broad topic we're gonna have a lot of diverse picks i think i'd be surprised if anybody double stacks but we'll see we'll see all right but before we start sharing our picks of course let's run down the rules how the show works once a week we set a topic or theme theme a topic or theme a topic or theme and go our separate ways to construct our own three film stack then after a week we come back here on the podcast and share our own stacks one film at a time then at the end of the show we will mix and match our nine films make the ultimate decision what quintessential three film stack we are checking out of this hypothetical video store brandon our loyal scoutmaster from who who is that who'd you just draw is that, is that homer i just <laughs> No. Brandon drew a little balding bearded man and just showed it to us on screen. Anyways, Brandon, show us tell us about your first short film, will you? Mm-hmm. Show us show us it. Uh play, my the, first play the clip. One, you play the clip. <laughs> play the clip. Play this play it. <laughs> it's one you can find on YouTube. I actually watched this in line uh at Disneyland one day, uh in the queue for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. I think it was like January of 2020. No, no, no. Was it? Yeah, January of 2020. So I was I was there with a few friends and I was like, I need to watch a movie. Holy shit, I forgot I got to watch a movie today. And there's this movie called Coda. Uh, I don't remember what year it's from, 
but it's this movie that is like so strikingly animated and different like it it feels like a painting come to life almost like because it uses like um and this isn't to confuse it with the new movie that came out this year the coda movie from sundance or like even ones before that like child of deaf adults but it's it's this animated beautiful short about like existentialism and where humanity is from and the will to live and it's because it's like a it's, it follows this lost sh- soul so it's like very abstract because he has conversations with a death-like figure and about life in general and it's something like i feel like can be a meaningful like impact or make a meaningful impact on somebody uh over the course of just nine minutes like it did for me it's like one of my favorite shorts i've ever seen and it, i watched it on my phone you know it, that's kind of the beauty of shorts sometimes is like they don't really need a big screen sometimes now it, it i mean i think it would lend itself to being on the big screen but it doesn't need it it's great it's beautifully animated it's got great thought-provoking ideas what more could you want you said this was in the fucking in a fucking line yeah, at a theme park. I didn't have time yeah. to I'd go back to no. home and watch something. No, I get it. those theme, <laughs> Honestly, I get it. Like, theme park lines are like... You just have to find anything to entertain yourself. And I think, yeah, short form, yeah. Short form cinema is a great way to do that. Only nine minutes. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm kind of pissed off, if I'm going to be honest. Because I thought of the idea oh. of this film a long time ago. And I wanted to make a movie like this. Like the exact same premise, except for instead of with a lost soul, it was with Bigfoot. But anyways, I'm kind of pissed <laughs> off with the fact. Like I even had the frame that they use for the background on Letterboxd is like that's I had that shot in my head. And I'm kind of pissed. No, you didn't. No, yes, you I did. did. <laughs> yes, I did. Why would I make this is the most dumbest thing I'd make up of all this things? This is a bit. You're alive. This isn't a bit. This isn't a bit. Why would I make this up? You're stupid. <laughs> and I'm pissed. I'm never watching oh. this film. Fuck this Really? Movie. No, you Just like kidding. it. This I sounds amazing. Like this sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> Which is why I... because Because they stole my idea. That's why it sounds so amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Even though this came out in 2013, I thought about it like two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> they stole my idea. I think one thing that Ethan, especially like you and I have it very deeply in common is that we are both incredibly existential people. Like, I think, I think Brandon, I don't know about you. Cause I, I know you're a bit more down to earth than Ethan and I are, but like, I feel like, I don't know, Ethan, do you ever feel like existentialism is just something that like, is the, clo- like, I, I, okay. Maybe I'm speaking for you, but like, for me, existentialism is like the closest thing I have to like a religion. So, Shit like like shit like this or like anything that deals with that kind of theme is very very interesting yeah. to me. So I don't know what yeah. do you what do you make of existentialism, man? <laughs> well, I think it's <sighs> he has an Eva poster behind him. What do you think? Well, I I think that you know <laughs> as I touch <laughs> Shinji's asshole. No, that's right. No, don't. Uh, <laughs> He's a minor. Uh, you can't do that. Ah, shit. Hey, that didn't stop Masato. Anyways, um, oh. ah. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't. There's, there's so much to say about that, Chris. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I really, I, think, I really opened up I, a, a big question. <laughs> You're just like ex- existentialism. What do you think? Boom! <laughs> Put the microphone in my mouth. Uh, man, I, I just, I don't know. I love the the plot of a conversation with death of the something personified as like the end as something finite as your last moments, you know, um, it's just, it's such an easy tool to have your characters reflect on like what their purpose is and like what the meaning of it all has been, you know, and have that instead of thinking to themselves, having someone to bounce that off of, you know, which is like, why the movie Seven Seal works so good, you know, and why uh-huh. this movie works so good, and why the movie I wanted to make would have been fucking amazing, but now I can't because this fucking movie sucks. God damn it. Anyways, we we could do a whole podcast on existentialist films. I think we're gonna do that soon. I'm sure that'll I think be a that'd, thing be one a, day. that'd be yeah. a good topic. Yeah. All right, that's a good first pick, Brandon. Yeah. I love it. I want to watch this. 
Uh, yeah, Chris, yeah, let's watch it tonight. You want to kick us with All your right. first film? I think I'm going to pick the one that you guys were both probably expecting the most. If you had to guess what mine would be, hmm. it, um, it is a film uh, from 2018, directed by D- I apologize for my pronunciation, Do- Domi Shi or Shi. Um, Domi Shi. It is Bao, the Pixar film. Uh, oh, Bao! Yeah. Yes, I love this. So. One. I mean, like, one thing I definitely wanted to cover is short form animation, because I think animation is, I think, also tied very closely to short form cinema, because both formats require a lot of, like, efficient narrative storytelling, I feel like. And I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like animation lends itself very well to that. Um, and yeah, so I chose Bao. Um, yeah, uh, how do I, what do, I mean, what does there to say about Bao? I mean, like, the, I really love the animation, the production design, the music, it's beautiful. Um, but what really struck me about Bao was on a deeply cultural basis and how that film resonates so deeply with people, um, or at least with me. And, you know, obviously you have like the empty yeah. nesters narrative, which is very universal. Um, but arguably the story about family is even more resonant with Eastern audiences due to like familial based values that are is kind of integrated into the culture um and yeah it's a story about growth and family and the ability to like reconcile your own your own like self-worth with the relationships you have with within your family um yeah and i honestly thought it was very sweet and charming you know it's only like i think like five minutes long um and the director was recently handed a um a feature to do so that's exciting um turning red yeah turning red um and yeah i mean like i just think it's a very small sweet simple charming movie there's no dialogue in it um and there's this one moment towards the end where the the mother's real life son comes home with a white girlfriend and i remember i was in hong kong when that when i watched that and i was in like a theater full of like fellow asian people and i remember when Mm -hmm. that moment came on everyone was like oh shit oh shit because that is kind of an (laughs) oh shit moment of like oh god like this is gonna be interesting um and yeah you know i know like the (laughs) the scene where spoiler alert the mom eats the bow eats bow is can be very perplexing and polarizing because i mean you know she just ate this thing that she seemed to love um and i i do want to ask what do you what do you guys make of it because i know what i make of that but how do you feel about that moment? I feel like the that moment is like representative of like how somebody loves somebody so much. But it's not like literally like you're eating them, but like you're e- you're taking away their decision to like choose to like make a decision in life or live. And it's almost like it, you're eliminating their like presence from your life in a metaphorical sense rather than it just being like sort of silly in the moment it seems like but i think it's like quite an original and unique take and it is very shocking because you're not expecting it i remember like i mean like even in like everywhere whenever people saw that everyone goes oh what and like yeah i mean i think i agree with you brandon like i do think the um the like bow as a character is pretty much just an like an allegorical like encapsulation of what the mother is going through as an empty nester um and when she eats bao it's kind of, i feel i see that as her kind of like um kind of co- reconciling herself with that and realizing that like oh shit like you know this is this person and it's kind of like my feelings are within this fucking dumpling thing um yeah ethan you is that kind of how you see it too i yeah i completely agree with all you guys uh what you guys said and i just like it, i want to test like of how brilliant uh, that they decided to tell the story in the animated medium, you know? Um, It just goes to show, like, how um, experimental you can get with animation in short form by telling something like this, by uh, literally, like, controlling the frame and controlling reality to create this symbolism, you know, of having the sun being a literal dumpling, you know? Um, And it's just, it's so it's it's so obvious but it's fine because it's so smart and it like it's it resonates with everyone you know yeah um Mm -hmm. 
it I it definitely resonated with me, you know. Um I, I mean I wouldn't say my my parents aren't necessarily hel- helicopter parents, but s- sort of that relationship that you do have with your parents of them always watching over you, you know, it it just plays into that and it's just it's such a great short film. It's definitely one of Pixar's best. I'd say top top of the line, top of the line. All right. Fantastic pick. All right, I'm gonna go into my first pick. It is also an animated film, short film. Um my first pick is only one minute long. Only a minute. Oh. No. <laughs> animated. But huh? no, but Brandon, that 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 face palm is about to become a big grin because it's directed by the master Satoshi Khan. Oh my god. Hold on a sec. I think two cars almost just smashed okay. into each other in front of our house. Anyways, that, <laughs> the movie cool. is <laughs> the movie <laughs> is called uh, Ohio or Good Morning. Um, it's a minute long, and it, it's essentially a woman waking up from sleeping. That's all it is. It is. It tracks her getting up, um, going to the refrigerator, uh, getting a, a glass of orange juice taking a shower, looking in the mirror, and saying good morning. That's the whole film. But what makes it so brilliant is what Satoshi Khan is so good at doing by using animation to uh, convey the subconscious, you know? So you'll have... Hold on. God damn it. Hold on a second. The dog is going ape shit. Oliver! Hey! You hear Ethan start beating the shit out of Oliver? He would never. No. Oliver's such a good boy. He ran and attacked me today. It was kind of cool. He was adorable. <laughs> as soon as I came home from work, when Ethan let in Oliver, I heard like him r- start running towards my door, mm-hmm. and he rounds the corner, and he's like, because it's like laminate, his like claws couldn't like gain traction, uh, like, so he's like, around. yeah, but he saw me and he started like running at me. I was like, <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Okay, I put him down. So, no. anyways, what? what was I saying? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you should um, you should totally keep that in. Up the podcast, Ethan. <laughs> you yeah. should totally keep that in because okay. we were we were um, ta- we were talking about why Oliver is such a good boy, and then you came back like I put him down. <laughs> <laughs> keep this in. Keep, keep it, it all in. in. Yeah, it's I'll good. keep this in. It's good audio. I didn't put him down, everyone. It was just a joke. It was just a prank. Okay, you don't know what the internet thinks these days. Anyways, yeah, we love him. He's a good boy he's so good he's my favorite um so what this what the short film does is basically uh satoshi khan projects um the physical self with the subconscious self so there's two versions of this woman in the frame one is slightly behind from the other right so when the woman wakes up she's like she's kind of translucent and there's another translucent woman on the bed and it just it communicates the, the pro how we feel how our mind acts in the morning where our body is still somehow ahead of us our brain because we're still waking up you know we're we're you ever feel like that when you're waking up and you're like oh i just want to go to bed I'm, i feel like i'm still asleep you know um so she like she goes to the fridge but her but she's still in the bed while she's getting up to go to the fridge and then when she gets the water like then herself in the bed and then eventually they meet up at the end and she says, Ohio, and that's the end of the film. And it's so brilliant. The animation is absolutely beautiful. I think it's I think it's literally the last thing he worked on before he died. Um it came out in 2008. Master. And it just it just goes to show, like what I was saying with Bao, of just like and just with short films in general, of like expressing these succinct, finite ideas within a short amount of time and just doing it masterfully, you know? And it's a brilliant short film. It's all on YouTube. You two could literally take a break and watch it right now and come back to it if you want. But whatever. I'm fine. What <laughs> oh, I'm fine. What do you guys think of this <laughs> short film? Yeah, I mean like it's only a minute long and like so there's there's only so much you can do in a minute. But the fact that like this one minute long film is getting as much of a reaction out of you like as i've seen like like i've seen i've seen like you watch like three hour movies and have no reaction at all 
but then like this one really <laughs> seems to be getting you up on up on your like up on your feet for it but i don't know yeah. i mean like it sounds like it's a wildly simple film it, as it sounds just sort of yeah. someone waking up in the morning but it's one of those i guess it's one of those things where it's like the meaning of the film is derived from the way in which you interpret it or whatever lens you put on or whatever so like, i don't know is there is there anything to oh, it yeah. beyond that or how would you like or there's is it, literally, is it literally there's just nothing that? else to it it's literally just that amen. it's a minute long and it <laughs> amen we love a short film <laughs> but i don't know it's just like i wanted to choose something that's so short that is able to say so much about the human mind and the human consciousness you know uh brandon as i was saying this is for those who this sorry no no i was i was just saying we both watch paprika it's now your favorite animated film of all time so to, so is it Kong, really yes what wow. do you think yes. yeah it's his Holy favorite moly. chris Wait, you gotta watch it dude. has chris seen it i have not seen no Paprika. i've heard it's like in- chris hasn't seen any satoshi Kone, has he i don't think so no because he couldn't show he, he had to leave for perfect blue right yeah oh, chris yeah. You gotta you gotta watch some Satoshi Kon, man. If you got if any of your roommates got Criterion Channel, uh, Millennial Actress, not Millennial, Millennium Actress, and Paprika, and <laughs> Millennial Actress. I've this heard director Paprika is right is, up your alley because I've heard Paprika is a big and big source of inspiration for Nolan with Inception. Is that true? Uh, it, in some aspects, yes, but I would say like it's kind of like avatar and like dances with wolves like i think the comparison is overblown like yeah there's some definite like visual like intuitive like like inspiration to both but like it's not like like shot for shot like how you would know like kurosawa's uh the adaptations of kurosawa's work and other stuff like seven samurai to magnificent seven or uh hidden fortress to star wars it's not like that it's like its own thing yeah exactly uh anyways brandon what do you think about the short film I mean, it sounds like an interesting idea. I've liked everything Satoshi Kon has ever done. Three of his only f- four movies, because he passed away really early for a filmmaker, are in my top 100. So I'm sure this is just like right up my alley. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's he's a, he's such a visionary. Like I don't he he captures like the subconscious mind unlike any other anime director I've ever seen any animated director not just anime absolutely yeah all right let's get into the second round here with brandon your second short film Uh uh-huh yep (laughs) Uh did you forget (laughs) no i didn't forget oh i'm just i'm writing down a line that i want to say later in the podcast (laughs) brandon just just leans into the mic later and just goes boggers (laughs) <laughs> bogger <laughs> remember to say boggers 40 minutes into the podcast <laughs> okay uh my next film is a very well-known short actually i picked another i might go all animated i still haven't decided on two because there's two i'm debating on for my final pick but th- i picked another animated film this time it's a classic from pixar i feel like you can't have shorts without pixar because pixar like their identity is is very much tied to short films because before like toy story bugs life toy story 2 those early pixar movies they produced short films that they like showed off at animation conventions like um and stuff like that my my dad went to an art museum with my mom when they were dating and they saw like i think tin toy for the first time which is a very terrifying date movie if you think (laughs) about it um but my i picked uh one from right after that era but right before like you know, they showed a short before every movie. I picked Jack Jack Attacks. It's in their uh, DVD <laughs> uh, of Incredibles. It is fantastic. Uh, it is oh so. My, funny. Oh my god! You said like you said I, like Pixar classic. I was like, oh, he's gonna pick Jerry's Game. And, uh, I did. Th- I think I thought about Jerry's Game, but Jack Jack Attacks, guys. This this short is so freaking funny it is one of the funniest shorts ever and you know like you may be laughing at how ridiculous that sounds because it's like jack jack attacks like what the heck but like it's it's like you you watch incredibles and this is a perfect like short to accompany I, I, uh, it's a perfect short to accompany your viewing of the incredible I, I, 
I, I don't disagree with your pick. I do think like this like this makes sense, but I just love that you both of like, oh Pixar invented the animation feature and they're going back to the shorts with this one. Jack Jack <laughs> Jack, nice. Jack attacks. <laughs> Well, it's like, it's like, this is like a perfect companion piece. Think of it. For like two thirds of the movie, you're like, why, where is Jack Jack? Like, what, why is he like not in the movie? He's being babysat. <laughs> like, That's all I think. How did he movie. get into Where is Jack Jack? <laughs> what is Jack Jack doing? Where is he? Where's the baby? <laughs> like, how, and then at the end of the film, you're like, how did he tune into all these powers? You know, whatever. And you get your answer in Jack Jack Attacks, which is like a bunch of funny gags, like a bunch of funny slapstick gags with superpowers and babysitting. And I grew up, uh, um, I babysat kids when I was younger with my sister. And like, it's so relatable it, with the exception of the superpowers. But like, there are things that happen in it where it's like, of course, like I've had babies do that all the time, minus the superpowers, of course. But with superpowers, it's made even funnier. And I remember my parents and i like loved this like we it was always like whenever we watched incredibles we had to watch it like right after <laughs> my mom would always quote kari the baby like sitter and like she would always say like kari and then she'd say it with like a lisp or like what or whatever or, like with like you know how like with like like a garbled mouth because like she had braces and it always made it sound like shitter and i we always loved that as kids so yeah jack jack attacks guys fantastic <laughs> As... anybody gonna input you know? um yeah so <laughs> jack jack attacks right uh <laughs> it's i haven't it's thought about this short film in fucking ages are you kidding me? i forgot this existed it's so funny it's I, so I how could you forget? What happens? Is it's it just Jack like Jack a background and like crazy? isn't yeah he's like it? it's with the babysitter. No, it it gives background to Kari the babysitter and like the Incredibles world of brainwashing people people of their super like people who have superpowers and like their secret identities or whatever, and it's just like a bunch of like funny cutaway gags, but like done in a way that like fills in the blanks of the Incredibles movie. It's funny not funny <laughs> yeah so you know we talked a lot about like how experimental animation and how filmmakers can manipulate the frame and the animated form and the animated medium in such a short amount of time and i think i think jack jack attack also sort of plays into these themes of like uh sort of uh the edos of the human being when faced with godlike powers and a baby numbing on an orange is that an orange what the I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How could you forget? This is like one of the most forgettable Pixar shorts ever, Brand. I'm sorry. Like, it's. I don't think it's necessary watch it for watching you it. Haven't... I don't think it's necessary at all because you just like you already know that this happens when you watch The Incredibles. But I never said Kari. it was necessary. I never said it was necessary. Well, okay, but I don't know. It's, it's I just, said like, it's it's important to recognize Pixar's greatness via a short because they are known for their short films. Yeah, and I would have I would have recognized an original one like Bow or like Piper. I think Piper is a really good one too. Anyways, but sure, Jack Jack Attack. Piper's overrated. Well, that's because you don't like birds. No, that's Joey. Wait a minute. Never mind. Chris, what do you think <laughs> about Jack Jack Attack? Can you can you say can you talk about Jack Jack Attack in some of the most uh deepest most monotone oh. voice you can do like when you're ordering the jack jack no oh my god cookie. okay uh in case anyone doesn't know the that <laughs> yeah should i tell the story Give about why you jack. said that so if anyone doesn't know at uh california adventure yeah. um there yeah. is a big credit coaster and there's this little cart right out front that sells like incredibles like based like snacks and stuff and one of their one of their things they serve is like is a little like warm cookie, but it's not called a warm cookie. It's called a cookie num cookie num num. And I was dared once to go up to the person because I was gonna order one. Um, and instead of saying, "Could I get one one of the one of these, please?" I say in my deepest voice, I go up to it and say, 
Hello, can I get one cookie? Num num, please. And yeah. So anyway, um, so <clears throat> so talk about Jack Jack Attack. So, um, I actually have not seen Jack Jack Attack, but Jack Jack was like one of my favorite, one of my favorite characters in The Incredibles when I was growing <laughs> up. Um, so it's available on YouTube. I would highly suggest it. It has four point two million views. Seven years. That's ago. how you know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it says Jack Jack Attack Jack funny Jack. video. Look it up. It is a, it is a Dude, very funny video. It says funny video. Then that means fuck. I don't know what to tell you. It was directed by right. Brad Bird. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> is that Brad Bird's <laughs> best work? Is it better yeah. than Incredibles Two, Brandon? Uh, Honestly, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> Uh, and I didn't hear Incredibles 2. I don't think it's as good as I thought it was when it came out, but, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough of this Jack-Jack attack. Chris, let's go into This is why you break. have me on this show. All right. Um, before I move on, I just want to quickly say, like, we've been picking a lot of animation stuff, and, like, I, that's pretty cool to me. Like, I was thinking, I was just thinking about that, like, a bunch of other animation, like, films. Like, um, Ethan, did you see? I think you did. Brian, I don't know if you have the Shinkai anime, anime short Garden of Words? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Wood wreck. For well, it's not his best what, work, what but did, what kind of wreck? I mean <laughs> the, What kind of wreck, honestly. It's a beautiful anyway. looking film. The there's some plot elements you're like yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, teacher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um anyway. But that's not my film. Uh, my film is actually a very different tone. Um, it is a film that, Ethan, actually, you and I, I saw this years ago, but I think maybe you saw it for the first time when we saw it together um, during our horror class. It was a short yeah. that uh, Finch showed us. Um, it is directed by Shazam director himself, David F. Sandberg, in 2013. Oh, it's Lights Out. That's right. The original short that was mm -hmm. uploaded to YouTube and went viral and eventually got spun off into a feature. Um, yeah, so it's a wildly simple film. It's only three minutes long. Um, but in those three minutes, you have an incredibly effective and fright inducing short. Um, and honestly, this is a film that has like the horror of the final image of this film has actually stuck with me very closely ever since I first saw it. Um, and yeah, like even the feature has been getting like less acclaim than the original short, which was produced, but for like probably no more than like two hours of time, maybe like three to four, five, six, if you add editing time or whatever. But um, yeah, like the director also has this really great YouTube channel where he puts up random shorts he's made. And he also directed, as I said, Shazam, but also directed Annabelle Creation. So pretty quickly just went straight into like A-list, uh, well, quote unquote A-list um, horror cinema. Um, and yeah, like, you know, not much else to say beyond that. Like, it's very cheaply produced in his home with his wife. But almost that's kind of the charm of it. And, you know, the home madiness almost kind of lends to the terror of it all. Um, yeah. And I talked briefly when we first started the episode about, like, why I feel like short film is such a democratic format for people who want to make films. And I think this is a great example of because, honestly, like, one, maybe, like, a lamp or two at home and... Um, just fiddling with lights and um, you know probably an iPhone or like a little DSLR is all he, all this guy needed and look where he went so I think that's a great example of that but yeah what do you guys think about this short yeah so uh, this actually wasn't the first time I, I've seen this film before our class um, I watched it at a, at a sleepover on Halloween um, I think good call it was fresh freshman year of high school and yeah, my friend, she had a projector uh, in like her loft and we all like gathered around and we just watched horror short films and this was one of them. Um, and it is so effective. And I, I totally understand why we watch this film for like to set us up for our assignment where we had to create a horror short film, you know, because basically it plays off of one fear, which is the dark, you know. Um, and it's just it it's so effective by it perfectly paces like the the steps of people going through fear where it starts out as curiosity 
then uh fear then panic you know um and then it just leads up to that uh big jump scare ending and that jump scare really works i'm not really usually a fan of jump scares but i think that one really works uh yeah this is a great short film so effective in its budget uh i wonder how they got the kid that's the only thing i'm wondering like is that just like a the kid because the, the or the the lady i don't know the the monster that's his you know? that that the lady is his wife and the monster i the think the lady's is his mask. wife or... yeah just a mask that and but, then just like a... okay just got an actor. I don't know. Okay. They probably had to do some some fun effects. I don't know. Yeah, but, but I was like, that's like the most impressive part. Like, how did they get that? Anyways, but yeah, it's super good. Brand, have you seen Lights Out? You currently turned your lights off, so. Oh, I think I see yeah, it I turned in the room, them off actually. Because, yeah, I kind of... ah! behind you. <laughs> just, okay. just lets it happen. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I know of it. Uh, I worked at the movie theater when it came out. The the feature so i'm aware chris turned his lights on <laughs> um and I, I i don't know it's a fun concept i just don't know what to think about it because i haven't seen the movie but whenever you're operating in such like a like small minute amount of time having the ability to like scare people is like some of the best ways to get started you know in the industry i remember when i wanted to make movies growing up before i wanted to be like a film critic or a film journalist um uh, i was like horror films are the way to go and i would make short horror films but i never could make it as good as something like a, a james wan movie like when he did like his saw short or even this lights out even though i haven't seen it uh by david sandberg yeah good stuff good stuff all right um ooh. cool all right, I'll go into my second pick. Uh, it is a 2019 short film, and if you know me, you know I'm a big fan of Radiohead, Tom York, and uh, as of late, I've been becoming a real big fan of uh, director Paul Thomas Anderson. So, of course, I had to pick one of uh, Paul Thomas I Anderson's. Know. I think it's his most recent, recent his most recent work is the 2019 film Anima, uh, where. It is, it, it's a crazy, it's it's basically a music video for like an album, essentially, for a Tom York's like, he just made a small ad, uh, album with some fantastic songs, I may add. Um, and it's sort of, uh, it how I interpret it, it's, it's very, you know, uh, modern dance and Paul Thomas Anderson playing with light and the frame and blocking and... Uh, like I said, modern dance and performances and like people doing weird stuff with Tom York singing with his crazy weird voice and, uh, you know, synths and stuff like that. But what I basically like what I take from this film is it the process of uh, going through a, a relationship with somebody, essentially. So we see Tom York uh, start out on a bus and like... Uh, sort of caught up in the every day of his life and then he sees someone and then this sort of takes him on this bizarre journey of ups and downs and that's basically some like symbolizing this relationship and then at the end uh it's basically their breakup and them leave like coming apart you know and i just i think the synthesis between pta's direction and tom york's like musical genius is just like it makes for so it's an easy watch. I how many minutes is it? I forget how many minutes it is, but it's super short. I've seen it a bunch of times, and it's like if you're fifteen, um, I think, or fifteen. So. Yeah, I think it's fifteen minutes. If you're a fan of Radiohead, if you're a fan of Paul Thomas Anderson, this is a must watch. Uh, yeah, Brandon, I know you've seen this short. What do you What do you think of uh, Anima? Meh. You gave it three and a half. That's not a meh. Come on. Mm. I mean, like, it's visually great, you know, but I'm not a fan of the music. You know what I mean? I don't like yeah. Radiohead that much, to be honest. Oh, boy. Woo. You, you uh, just, uh, you've just you insulted the whole Williams impressive. family right there. That's a whole, that's a whole family you just took to get yeah, okay. on. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, visually, it is spectacular what they do in there. The choreography, 
the production design, what they do with the cameras in general is like kind of wild. But like I'm I'm just not a fan of the music, you know. I didn't like the vibe as much as like some people do. Ah. Uh, your your melancholic Shorts like that are balance. like not my style. Your melancholic balance is not as strong as mine. Anyways. Well, radio, I have melan- melan- I had the melancholic death movie that you like <laughs> that you were going to make. You know, how are you supposed make- to say that to me? Well, I'm pissed off. <laughs> can't believe you showed that to me because now now that i know it exists i can't make it it's all your fault (laughs) just kidding chris have you heard of this film no i have i have not um yeah (laughs) even heard of it no i mean like i don't i i don't know like much about paul thomas anderson other than the ruby blood and phantom thread i feel like i must have seen more of his other stuff but i don't remember anything else from by him Unless you guys have any Dude. thoughts that I might have I've seen. Punch you Drunk gotta, Love. Oh, yeah. Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. Yeah. You got to uh, see Boogie it. Nights. You got to see Boogie Nights, Chris. I think I think you'd love that movie. It's so goddamn good. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's the one I picked. Uh, let's get into our final round here because we're at about out of 50 minutes, maybe. Maybe even a little less. So let's let's go, Brandon, with your last short film. It's already me? Okay. Yes. Um, I have a choice. I have a choice to make: an animated or a live action. I'm gonna go animated again because it is Jack Jack Attacks Two <laughs> from the sequel. Actually, it is. Yeah. No, it's not. It's um, oh. I'm picking a film that Ethan and I saw together when we went to the Oscar short film uh, screenings in 2020. It's a French stop motion film. Called memorable, 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 memorable. Yes, it is. Yes. It is a fantastic depiction of Alzheimer's, uh, and of somebody kind of losing their mind over the course of like time, and it does it in a way that is like, I would say tasteful. You know, there are some films that wouldn't do it tastefully, like would make it sort of offensive but it's done in a way that is like sad and melancholic but also like honors that person who loses their memory and the visuals are spectacular it's hand like crafted obviously because it's stop motion so they like took real time to make these characters come to life and you felt it and there's there's ways they depicted characters on screen via like their character design or the world around them that kind of resemble florian zeller's the father a little bit in the sense of how they play with the the uh world around the person who is like struggling with memory loss and it's absolutely terrific like i i I remember seeing it and being like that should win but then i think it lost to like a pixar short that year because everybody's seen those and hasn't seen this and i just i just remember being blown away i don't remember if you loved it as much as i did ethan but i really like this short no, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I I've detected a pattern of the Oscar animated shorts over the past few years, where it feels like every single year there is an animated film that's nominated that's about someone's parent getting Alzheimer's and like their experience of sort of losing their memory and stuff like that. Um, but I think this one is the best <clears throat> of all the ones that they've that they've done. Mm. Um. The sort of agree, the oily claymation stop motion, you know, of the characters where everything's just like a little messy and, uh, which makes it like believably manipulated as this character is experiencing his, uh, his ment like this mental illness, you know, um, it's beautiful and it's absolutely tragic. Yeah, this is a a great film. Chris, have you have you heard of Memorable or I don't know. No, I have I haven't heard about this either. But like I do, like I do see what you what you were saying, Ethan, about how like I f- there felt like there was a time where like tackling the, f- the subject of Alzheimer's was becoming kind of like a common like thing in movies. Like it was always kind of like because it's a very sensitive topic and unfortunately one that I think a lot of people have to deal with. Um, like for example, um, not to get too personal, but like my in my family, like dementia runs through my family. Which like not exactly the same as Alzheimer's, but like similar in certain areas. So like no, yeah. I definitely do see why what you mean by and like 
you know, assuming like this is as like as high quality as you say, like it's it's as like I can Im- totally imagine why this would be such a powerful thing. And I think like especially considering that this is a short film, the fact that it's able to like kind of punctuate its like the emotional aspect of that in such a like with such efficiency that it fits within a for- a short form format is very powerful. And that, I think that's a testament to the quality of the filmmaking you have at hand there. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like a Dari, uh, not a Dari, uh, a Salvador Dari, uh, Dali, Dali. Uh, painting come to life. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. But you know what I mean, Ethan. It yeah. feels like you know, the world is melting away. And like, I, I, Chris, I also have experiences with that. My, uh, my grandmother like had sort of like onset dementia, like right before she passed away. So she like would have that, like, I don't know who you are or like foggy memory. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was kind of like, Oh, I, you could sort of feel it slipping. And to see it from that perspective is just so, so impactful. I just, I, I don't know. I can't get enough of it. Yeah. It's such a great film. You got to find a way to check it out, Chris. Uh, well, Chris, you want to go into your last short film? Yeah. So I was jumping between two different things for my final film. Um, it was either going to be a short that actually Troy showed me or a short that my film teacher in high school showed me. I do want to add, uh, and I chose the one that my high school teacher showed me, but I do want to shout out the one that Troy showed me. Uh, hopefully, Ethan, you didn't pick it for your last one, but um, it is called A Reasonable Request. Um, <laughs> very. Have you heard about this, Ethan? Uh, it won like a Vimeo award. It's literally a kid <laughs> trying to convince his dad to let him suck his dick. Um, anyway, so that's not the that. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Anyway, so it's a good one. It's really good. It's though. it's really <laughs> stupid funny. Anyway. Um, the film that I chose is actually a 2016 short directed by none other than Danny DeVito himself. Brandon, I showed oh. you this short. It's Curmudgeons. Um, I prefer. Never mind. It's okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, I, I really like this one, but and I'll get into that in a minute. But um, the reason my film teacher showed me this in high school was because he wanted to show his students um, that short films aren't just about taking a feature like concept and shrinking it. It's really its own unique format. I think this is a great example of that too. So on top of being an exemplary piece for that concept, I was also treated to this very pleasant short about and like about the tenderness and boundless like charm of family, love, and friendship. Um, yeah, you know, it's not the most amazingly produced thing in the world. And and um, Brain, I reread your review today uh, when I was do- like re- like prepping my thing, and you mentioned like. Uh, tonal shifting was definitely something they struggled with and I definitely agreed because I scrubbed through it and I was like oh man they're like hopping between comedy and drama like crazy Um, but one thing that keeps bringing me back to this film is the performances and the dialogue Um, and honestly just the way in which this film is really just about being true to yourself which is something I wholeheartedly agree with and honestly Daniel DeVito is fucking hilarious to me like literally anything he does is absolutely hilarious um (laughs) And I think he's, I think he is actually a very talented director when given the opportunity to really go for it. And, you know, granted, yes, not the most polished director in the world, but one that it kind of carries this little like spark of charm whenever he makes something. Um, and yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's it. What do you guys think? Oh, man. Uh, Brandon, you've seen this, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't love the movie. I think uh danny devito does a great job directing some of it i think he's in it brief i mean like he's like one of the main roles right chris yeah he's he's one of the guys does a good job dramatically it's just like it's something that didn't really leave an impact for me when i watched it like i feel like i got more out of a reasonable request when we watched it just because i didn't know what to expect going in and it just like surprised me because the dialogue in that is like just so absurdist like that reminded me a lot of like I think you should leave, not to harp on something that Ethan loves Ooh. or whatever, but that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, Curmudgeons is a good dramatic short, but it it didn't it didn't impact me like it impacted you. But what you're saying is a hundred percent correct about it being like a film about being true to yourself, a a, a film about relationships. It, it's 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 very it's very impactful for some, just not for me, which is surprising. Mm. Yeah, I. 
I forget that this dude directs. Like, I keep forgetting that he directed Matilda. And that's like, that's the only film that I've seen that he's directed. But uh, I keep forgetting that just Dan DeVito, he's a director. Um, And this sounds cool. It's like a nice. Yep. Uh, directed that movie. Yep. Yep. He sure did. Well, yep. He, he directed the hell of that one. Uh, I don't know. It sounds very, it sounds very lovely um, about just not being afraid of who you love and putting that in a sort of a different you you sort of see the story from a different perspective you know um sort of with a younger character but now you're seeing this with an older character you know um and i find that very admirable and i haven't seen it and i definitely want to check it out i want to check out both the ones you recommended they sound great all right right all righty let's get into the last pick here that is it is my last pick uh now this is my favorite short film of all time and it is directed by another master of cinema brandon you're gonna you're gonna hate this it's uh david lynch the man the myth the legend and oh. the 2020 <laughs> short film Stop what did my, jack do my, oh. no <laughs> True love's flame burns so bright. Come on. This movie is absolutely phenomenal. Not just because it... Okay, I I need to reset here. David Lynch, he... This film of his, I think, is the peak of absurdism and, like, goes to the, on the verge of Dadaism where... It's basically just an old-timey noir interrogation scene where David Lynch plays this detective and he's interviewing Jack, who uh, is revealed at the very beginning is a monkey. Uh, a monkey with David Lynch's mouth sort of edited over it like Annoying Orange style. And it is just David Lynch pl- going back and forth against himself as this monkey, basically spouting these classic interrogation lines that you hear from uh from old noir films you know like uh this just took a turn for the uh, this just took a turn fast or i haven't seen it in a while but i just remember watching that and losing my mind and losing my grasp on reality um he sort of he creates a similar atmosphere that he does for like eraser head and uh uh, I don't know if you've seen his other film. I think it's called Rabbits. His, that was a short film uh, that he did uh, where it's just like that. You hear that eerie atmospheric sound like vibration throughout and it's in black and white and the 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 frame is fucking dirty and he's just these two guys, this man and this monkey smoking and just David Lynch doing this ridiculous voice for this monkey professing his love to this chicken that he may have killed. Uh, to talk to Bond, my love. Anyways, it's it's something that I just it 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 jokerifies me when I watch it because it's so insane, and I absolutely love it for that. Um, and I just I had to include it on this list because it is, like I said, my favorite short film of all time. Brandon has Mjolnir ready, his Thor hammer. He is he looks like he's about to smash me in the head with it because I picked this film. <laughs> Let's let's see how much he can trash talk this other three and a half star rating that he gave to a short film. <laughs> Look, it's very hard to make a bad short film, and I'm not <laughs> saying it's. You ever uh, you ever been to film school? <laughs> yeah, you ever see, you ever been to those thesis screenings? Dodge screenings. Uh, <laughs> rip. Uh, <laughs> you ever seen Buddy Bot? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we love you uh i uh i am not gonna shit talk it i just i I don't get the love for it to be honest i think it's it's fascinating to watch something as absurd as this happen and i i like surrealism and absurdism sometimes like in comedy (laughs) it makes sense but like when it's in like something like a drama or like a a noir it feels this is a comedy though and i know I know. I don't think it's that funny, though. What? It's so funny. I don't really think it's that funny. And I'm not a big Lynch guy to begin with. Like, I've seen Mahone Drive, and yeah, it's good. But, like, I don't, like, love it, you know? 
um i think he's like a fascinating like person to like mess with like mindset wise but like it i know i know this is this is gonna sound absurd but i love it when surrealism uh kind of makes sense like in a deeper understanding you know what i mean like if a, if a film uses a, its absurdism or surrealism to play into a concept and it makes sense that's when it works for me rather than when it feels like what uh what did jack do which feels yes it's playing upon these noir tropes but like that's it like for me like that's like the bare minimum you know i i have to disagree with that i think it's playing off sort of like uh it, it's sort of playing off genre filmmaking you know and it's it's critiquing it and how it's using like an actual monkey as an actor and stuff like that you know i think i think lynch is playing off of taking one of the most one of the first but it is one of the first classical genres out there you know and sort of like uh playing a little commentary of like how far we've come and how we can't really have this this sort of thing anymore you know by the and he display he displays that by using a monkey that's how i read, read into it at least i think I you think just like monkeys uh, that's uh okay you got me there but <laughs> yeah I know. i'm not wrong i'm not wrong chris have you seen what did jack do no do you know what jack i had i actually <laughs> i i don't have like much context for some other than knowing that it's, it's like a detective talking to a monkey about a homicide or some shit and <laughs> yeah. like i mean and dad's david lynch which is like all right makes sense um i mean the only ex the extent of my exposure to david lynch has been mulholland drive uh the twin twin peaks and um eraser head mm -hmm. so needless to say like he's very much a a director that makes me like go ooh, like ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh. Um, makes me go ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so you know like i i wouldn't how do i put this in the in the least like offensive way possible i never enjoy myself watching a david lynch movie I agree with that. You know what I mean? And but I don't it's like, think it, it's supposed uh, to. I don't think we're supposed to, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with that. So <laughs> it's so it's very much like uh, it's. I don't know. I guess it just never made its way into like the spectrum of like what I want to watch because that and also like it was during this came out during the pandemic, right? Uh, well, it actually came out. It was made in 2017, and then it was like oh. it was screened once, and then it came on Netflix. I think, I think it was like yes, in January. I do remember seeing that all over Netflix. Yeah, and it was right before yeah, the pandemic. Okay. Though. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, but um, I I never got around to seeing it. Um, but I've only ever heard I've heard like this is like a surprisingly funny piece, and honestly, like I think David Lynch is also fucking hilarious because he's my daily weatherman. Um, yes. If anyone follows him on YouTube, he does daily weather reports for LA. So and I, I'm completely serious when I say that. So check him out today's weather is i just love his voice He's my favorite my favorite part is whenever he, whenever it's a friday and he changes yeah. up and he gets all excited because then he goes like he's like and today if you can believe it it's a friday once again <laughs> his weather report sort of reminded me of like review bra <laughs> pause the show yeah what the fuck brandon <laughs> What is this selfie? Yeah. <laughs> what emotion is this? <laughs> can, can, um, Ethan, if you could put this up on the stack YouTube, that yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saving this picture. Brandon just sent this can, to all Ethan, of our. Ethan, you and I have to. Ethan, we have to try and replicate it. Okay, All right, we're going to take a break yeah. from the show to do a photo photo op. We'll be right back. And right, we're back. Um, <laughs> Ethan, would you like to share yours and mine as well with the audience? Yeah, well, I'll just put them all on screen now. Boom. <laughs> Look at these three handsome guys. <laughs> can, we can we tweet these? Yeah. A little preview for next week's episode. For, for next week's episode. <laughs> Yeah, Ethan, dude, Wait, we got, I, I, I got to add them all together as one image. 
Okay, you do it. You so do that. just so the Twitter crop will look good, let's make it all one image. So let's do that after the show. But yeah, yeah look for look forward yeah. to that on your Twitter timelines, everybody. Even though you probably have already seen it. Uh, are you? What are you doing now? God damn it! Are you watching them? Oh, no. <laughs> Brandon's watching. I think you should leave while we're recording a podcast. No, you're the worst. No, I just thought it. I. I... <laughs> Did you just you filmed the whole skit? You're so stupid. All right, no, let's fuck, let's wrap up this podcast. <laughs> let's wrap it up. All right, so let's run down everyone's short films, starting with you, Brandon. Come on, give us your short films. I I did Coda, Jack Jack Attack, and <laughs> Member of Life. So chaotic. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Chris, what's your short films? <laughs> My, mine is bow lights out and curmudgeons <laughs> all right and mine is ohio anima and what did jack do all right boys uh okay. this is gonna be tough what do we what do we want this to is sort for of this is capture in the stack you know this is the stack for people who don't have time for a normal stack <laughs> yeah or money <laughs> they're, or they're money. just like i ah, just need youtube <laughs> no going right. to blockbuster um, or um let's see yeah wh- did you wh- ever did you the find intro? these at a blockbuster what did i ever do the intro did you, you ever do the intro to the show like where you said like uh, every week we check out a blah 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 yes where where were you uh somewhere else i guess i don't god know god damn it pay attention uh, to your own podcast man <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking we have one existentialist thing in there. We have one funny thing in there, and we at least gotta have one animated. Yeah, thing, there has to be one. Happen. There has to be one animation. Absolutely. This is really hard. This is actually a surprising. Yeah. I I can't even begin. How do you? How I do you think calculate? lights out would be good because I think it, lights it's out different be from the rest. Yeah, because it's different from the rest in the fact that we don't have a a real a live action or a horror thing. You know. Mm. yeah unless you consider what would jack do horror no how about this Um, how about this lights out memorable what did jack do i think that sort of covers are you all of our discussions about animation that we had um we talked a lot about horror and like using horror in short form and then like comedy and experimental filmmaking in short films like that's very important for short films and small directors and short films you know uh, because in a feature film you don't really get Are you as that much sour freedom about Coda. Ah, uh, f- yeah, fuck that movie. That was my idea. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Wait, did Jeff? Did I, Jeff? I could back that up, but Coda is my favorite. Coda is my favorite of those three. It is my favorite short film. <laughs> but I right. actually, I want to make. I'll make you watch it tonight. Okay. That's a deal. Uh, then would you rather do Coda than Memorable? I mean, they're both very similar in their themes. It's just the animation is so much more impactful in Memorable. Because, like, I remember seeing that movie and being like, wow. Like, I've never seen animation like that. And I watch a lot of stop motion. So, yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Chris, you cool with that stack? I think that's a we cover a lot of topics there. That we talked about in this podcast. Your mind's going to go away when you watch this snap. Honestly, yeah. I think this is a good selection. We have, like... I think we cover a broad range of, like, genres as well. <laughs> including animation. A genre. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out uh, to Ben Kita. Th- that's animation. Best genre. <laughs> uh, genre, by the way. It's a genre. <laughs> <laughs> it's a genre. Not a medium. It's a genre. It's a genre. Yeah. Um, how should we order this? I think you're like any other film. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're not different. <laughs> no, but I think I think Lights Out is a good way to start, and then I think we go. Um, let's throw in that memorable. existentialism with Memorable or not? Oh yeah, we're doing Memorable. We're throwing that trippy animation with Memorable and that how to tell animation through that lens. And then we end with what Jack do, which is pure insanity and experimental cinema in its definition, you know? 
You guys cool with that? This is our okay. Joker stack. Could you could you imagine this... how weird it would? I, I I like this this order, Ethan. I was just imagining okay. how 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 weird it would be if we ended on lights out, and the last thing you see is your death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go home. Oh, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> no i just want to imagine uh because we talk you about going imagine. into a hypothetical video store i just want to see someone try to find these movies at like a blockbuster <laughs> yeah you guys got the dvd for a lights out not the the feature film just the the one like the three minute long one <laughs> yeah i want that one like dude it's free and i know what the jack do was a netflix exclusive but but do you add it <laughs> All right, yeah, that's a this is a solid stack. Look at that, and let's let's run it down, shall we? So this is Stack's official quintessential short film final stack, starting with Chris. You want to kick off this list? Yep. Our very first film is David F. Sandberg's 2013 film Lights Out that he made at home with his wife. Uh, a very efficiently done, horrifyingly executed short film that. Uh, will leave an impression long after those three minutes are over. Brandon, our second pick. And our next film is a tale about the human mind and how, you know, we aren't always permanent and things are forever changing and that's okay. But you got to learn to cope with those changes as well as kind of realize where people are coming from. It's a shift of a perspective. Yes, yes. And finally, uh, we end this film with showing how experimental one can film. get in the sh- it, it's a short film uh <laughs> uh it's showing how experimental a filmmaker can get in the short form and that is david lynch's what did jack do and a complete insane film about a monkey and a detective and about true love's flame and what what is what is what does jack say they say that real love is a banana Sweet with a golden hue. Come on. That's it's perfect. It's great. And that's our stack. And that's the episode, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in to Stacked Episode 52. Uh damn, we're now chugging along to episode 100. It's crazy. Uh once again, thank you all for listening. Sure. And uh Bud story, Bud story, Bud story. But we're story, chugging along to Bud story. Bud story. story. Hey, I, th- I feel like I feel like we've ended a podcast like this before, but I'll show you a butt story. <laughs> <laughs>